Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the other two problems uh, in this question about using Eisenstein's criterion to show polynomials are irreducible. So C is going to be actually very similar to A and B. The only tricky thing is you have to identify the prime, and it may not be as obvious as uh, in the other ones. So if we do a prime factorization of 309, we get 3 times 103. 824, well, you might notice 8 goes into 800 and it goes into 24, so 8 should go into, 100 and into 824, and it goes in 103 times. So in fact, 103 are both common factors. So if we let p equal 103, then we say, okay, 103 divides 309, it divides 824, there's no fourth power or square to worry about, or even linear term. They all have zero coefficients. Um, and, of course, 103 doesn't divide the leading coefficient 1. And 103 squared does not divide 824. So, by Eisenstein's criterion, we know that x to the fifth plus 309x cubed plus 824 is irreducible over q. All right, what about d? So d, if we look at the coefficients, you have 3, 3, and an 8, forgetting about the signs, uh, there are no primes that divide all of those, right? 8 is 2 cubed, 3, already a prime. So we can't immediately apply Eisenstein's criterion. However, if we do a little shift, so let's say we, we didn't know how much we wanted to shift, it by, shift by, but we shifted by some k. So OK, we're going to shift by some amount. We know that doing these shifts is not going to change the irreducibility or reducibility of the polynomial. Now, if I expand this, I, you'll see I get x cubed. Now, how many x squareds? So here, in this first term, I'll get 3k x squareds. And then in the second one, I'll get minus 3x squareds. So in total, 3k minus 3x squareds. Uh, and how many x's? Let's see. So we have 3k squared x's from the first term. Uh, we're going to get minus 6k x's from the second, and then 3x's from the third. Okay, and then constants. So the first one gives us a k cubed. The second one will give us a minus 3k squared. third one will give us a plus 3k, and the last one gives us a minus 8. Now, we look quickly at the the square term and the x term, and we notice if we let k equal 1, both of these terms will go to 0. So if I let k equal 1, then I get x cubed, the middle, the second and third term go away, plus, well, again, k is 1, so I get 1 cubed minus 3 plus 3, okay, that's just 1 minus 8, it's going to be minus 7. So x cubed minus 7. And this we can use Eisenstein's criterion on. So if we let p equal 7, then Eisenstein's criterion implies x cubed minus 7 is irreducible over q. All right, But x cubed minus 7 is just a shift of the original polynomial. And so we conclude that x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 8 is irreducible over q. Right. In terms of the function notation, we would say, you know, if um, uh, if f of x was equal to our x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 8, then x cubed minus 7, right, that was a shift, right, by a plus 1, so this would be f plus 1 of x. Right? And